Here at the Engineer Research and Development Center, we're the research and development arm for the Corps of Engineers. We discover, develop, and deliver new solutions to keep the world safe and make it better every day. Here at the Geotech and Structures Lab, our mission is to create solutions that improve our nation's defense, security, public safety, and infrastructure. New technologies like metal additive manufacturing at large scales are just instrumental in delivering new ways to get after these challenges that our nation faces. Large scale components on some of our uh, civilian infrastructure like locks and dams have classically been produced by traditional forging and casting processes. Um, the need to repair bridge components for our military is often done with traditional manufacturing methods and by bringing these new technologies forward into those challenging areas gives us new ways to deliver solutions faster, um, sometimes weeks instead of months or years to get a component back in place. Within the Arctic portfolio, we leverage added manufacturing for two, two major components, one of those being materials development. So utilization of additive to develop materials that can't be manufactured otherwise. So maybe that's a functional gradations or maybe it's a, a discrete layer systems of coatings, um, metal matrix composites. These are a lot of material systems that can't be developed through traditional manufacturing means. So the other side of that is also looking at scalability of technologies as well as pushing these technologies as far forward as possible. There's a lot that goes into ensuring that these materials meet the stringent uh, performance metrics that we set from an additive manufacturing standpoint. So both using additive but also from a modern materials standpoint. A lot of that can be traditional mechanical testing and characterization, so maybe ballistics testing, so looking at V50 values and things of that nature. It may be looking at delamination, so we may be using additive technologies to actually coat some existing structure and I need to know if it has some kind of impact or kinetic event, is that system going to delaminate? Um, it may be looking at high rate performance and doing uh, split hops compression bar type testing of different material systems. Uh, but there's also a lot of work that actually goes into trying to look at these material systems while they're actually being printed so that I can guarantee their part performance. So uh, during that process, I can track all of these different parameters like weld wire feed speeds, uh, robot movement, power of the actual weld system itself, or how fast a particle is embedding or hitting its substrate as it's being deposited. All of this information gives me details on what the final performance of that part or the coating is actually going to be so when it is fi finally manufactured I can actually go through and have good confidence in what that part performance is going to look like. One of the challenges that we face is you know decades in some cases centuries of industrial engineering and material science have been in place that provide us standards and codes and ways to confirm that you know items coming off an assembly line perform similarly um, with new technologies like additive manufacturing, we're not there yet. There's still a lot of research to be done. And so our researchers are part of those codes and committees that are understanding how this technology is evolving, making sure that we're at the table so that the committees understand where our needs are and are captured as we move forward to implement this in civilian practices across the nation. Here at the Information Technology Laboratory, really starting out at the strategic level, we're really thinking a lot about how can we utilize advancements in high-performance computing, artificial intelligence, and the network and security requirements across those networks to really transform every mission that we can think of. And it's going to help fill in a lot of knowledge gaps for complex processes that even today we don't understand the physics and chemistry and, and first principles of. And so AIML can help us with that. ITL is on the cutting edge of industry 4.0 and so in order to do that um, we've developed a couple of computational tools a framework uh, if you will that does in situ sensing and monitoring all of that information tries to understand what's happening during the, the printing process so you can find those key performance drivers that are, are giving you good quality or bad quality um, and then we feed all of that into a data warehouse that is spatial and temporally indexed so we have a lot of data science tools what that does is it helps us understand exactly what's ha happening in the process. And then we uh, take that information, we update our finite element analysis models, and then we do some other AI models that are actually quite faster. But in the end, what we're trying to do is get to this machine control, and we need all that information for the training. We use that to do things like digital twins and, and closed loop feedback controls. 
One of the long-term goals in our development of this technology is if we can have onboard computers and models that are running in tandem with manufacturing, we can take what would have conventionally required a team of engineers, a testing laboratory, and a lot of time and effort and deploy it anywhere in the world. And so when you think about an aircraft carrier operating in the Pacific or a forward operating base, they can produce those parts and all of these models are providing all that expertise where they need it at the point of need to support their mission requirements. Our partners here at the Information Technology Lab and their expertise in artificial intelligence and machine learning, computational science, um, have been great partners. Uh, but we know that we alone within the government can't do this. We need to bring in industry and academia, and we've partnered with them for years. Uh, they maintain expertise and knowledge of what's feasible, what's achievable and affordable in the marketplace, uh, and we bring the government application needs to them. So it's a great partnership across the whole of government and the whole of industry, and we do it very successfully here at Erdic. The future's bright. We look forward to uh, seeing what's next to come.